Many years ago, Cold Steel released their Voyager line of folding knives. This one happens to be the medium with VG1 blade steel on there. Made in Japan. This is their smallest one. They had another kind which had a pod clip that was built in from the handle. It wasn't a metal one screwed on like this, like you see most of the time. But other than that, the knife was pretty much the same thing. Their thumb studs were different, too. They had cylindrical ones. They had slightly different shapes here and there. Over the years, they made mild adjustments to these folders. But many would consider this the old model Voyager. Again, there's a few different variants of it, but this one does not have the aluminum liners in it. It does not have the triad lock. It does not have CTS BD1 steel, and for a time, it was AUS 8A steel. So they went through a few different changes, but this is pretty much different from the newer lineup of Voyagers. In fact, I don't even think they make the medium size anymore. I think that's out of stock as far as the new ones go. They also happen to have the large-sized Voyagers. This happens to be a Vaquero. It's not a Tonto blade. A little bit bigger. We got a 4-inch blade in here. So actually, it's a, it's a pretty long, big knife for what it is. And then for the really bold, they release the XL size. Extra large. We have a 5-inch blade in there. So we have a 3-, 4-inch, 5-inch blade. This is a ridiculously huge knife. And for the really brave of heart... They released the X2, which had a 6-inch blade. These are no longer being made. Again, these are previous generations. I think it's been over 10 years now since they made these. I want to say 2011, 2010, somewhere around there. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Please correct me in the comments. That's always appreciated. But nearly a decade ago, as of filming this, they stopped making these. The main difference between, again, we have VG1 stainless steel instead of CTS BD1 slash AUS 8A, if you want to go a few years back. We don't have liners in the handles. We have lo regular lockbacks, not triad locks. The triad lock has an addition of a stop pin in between the tang of the blade and the end of the lock bar right there on the roof of the handle. Um, so a little bit weaker, a little bit lighter, but you could consider that an advantage. No, it's lighter. VG1, I'm not sure how it compares to CTS BD1, but I would say it compares, it's comparable to AUS 10 steel. I would say in my testing and in my experience and my research, it's kind of close to AUS 10. They're pretty different stainless steels in different ways. But from as far as I understand, it's it's pretty close to AUS-10. I would say VG-1's a step up above AUS-8. But they're very different blades, so they function completely differently. So the X2 was a oversized folder. I mean, you can already consider the XL an oversized folder. And this is, this came in the clip blade, as well as the uh, Vaquero-style blade, like you saw in the large right here. Yes, the XL had a size like that. And... There was also the Vaquero Grande, which was the X2 size, but with this style blade on it. But it did not have a pocket clip, which I think sucks. They should have put a pocket clip on that. But other than that, uh, that's what they had. There was no X2 size Tonto, which makes me really sad, because Tonto's pretty much my favorite blade still out there. But anyway, this is the X2. Just thought I'd do a quick overview of it. It's not really like an in-depth review, because they don't make these anymore. It's kind of a collector's piece now. But these are still very functional folders. I love these Voyagers. Um... The pin construction on there, they don't have screws, they're pin constructions, so you cannot take them apart, at least not easily or without destroying them, you can't take them apart. Um, pin construction's kind of outdated these days, people consider these to be old, uh, and I, I would agree, I like being able to take apart my knives, or at least having the option to oil them, to clean them, if something goes wrong, I can go in there and check it out. I'm trying to clean the smudges off the satin blade right there, it's not working out with my shirt. Um, but yeah, they have pin construction, which I think is outdated. Um, I'm glad they upgraded from having the molded pocket clips that were built in from the handle to a metal one that you can remove, not swappable to the left side. Yes, that sucks, because otherwise this would be a totally ambidextrous knife right here. Talking about the XL, i sorry, the X2. Let me get all these other knives out of the way, just so I'm not as distracted. We're going back to the X2, because that's what the video is about. Six-inch blade, seven and a quarter inch handle, I believe. Yeah, seven and a quarter inch, making this a 13.25 inch folding knife. It's over a foot long. It weighs just 6.51 ounces, which is actually really light for a six-inch blade. But that should make sense, because this is ITEL or Zyx handle, whatever you want to call it. It's basically glass and plastic mixed together. If you're familiar with FRN or GRN or GFN or whatever the variant is, Glass and plastic melted together gets you a really, really hard polymer. You can smack this on the sidewalk all day long, and it will just not break on you. It's a really hard, durable material, and it's great as a handle. So FRN, there's a reason we've been using this crap for like 30 years, whatever it's been right now. It's a really good material, and that's all it is. It's strong enough. Uh, it does not need more strength. There's no steel liners or aluminum liners in there or anything. This plastic is just not going to bend on you no matter how hard you try. So a very lightweight, I would say medium-use 
folder. It's not a hard, heavy use. Not not nearly like the, those those new Voyagers. Those are super ultra freaking hard use knives. And I love them for that. But the older model Voyagers were a little bit lighter. Yeah, not as hard a use, but you got some lighter weight out of them. I just wanted to do a quick look at video of it, just because I think these are so cool. Huge blade right there, satin finish. Again, six inches, which is really impressive. And despite that, it's very comfortable, although it's very simple handle. I like the diamond pattern they had on these old Voyagers. They've upgraded to an iron cross pattern, I believe it's called, which is even more aggressive than this. But I like this too. Really beautiful. Jimping up here. Doesn't do very much, because it's not correlated with the lock bar right there. But, you know, it tries its best. I like these thumb studs. They taper just slightly at the edges. They're not cone-shaped. On the X2, anyway. This one, anyway, I should say. VG1 Steel, again, comparable to AUS-10. It's a little bit different, but I would argue it's close to that. So it's pretty good. You might be familiar with VG-10. This is VG-1. VG-10 Steel is a lot different from VG-1 Steel, believe it or not. There's, I, there's a lot more vanadium in it. Or I don't even think VG-1 has vanadium in it. I can't remember. There's a lot of differences. But basically, VG-10 is a completely different steel from VG-1. However, VG-1 is still very good. Good edge retention. It has good rust resistance. Overall, it's a good steel. Um, when they downgraded to the AUS-8, a lot of people were disappointed by that. I think it's a Taiwanese-produced blade steel, and VG-1 was Japanese-produced. Not that it has anything to do with the country it's from, but a lot of people were disappointed in the change of blade steel, just because it was considered a slight downgrade. Eh, it's arguable. I think it's not that big of a deal. But, yeah, basically, this was it. This was the biggest option of all of the old-style Voyagers. Again, it's super beautiful. There's such a nice simplicity about it, too. And although it is pin construction, not screw construction, it won't loosen up on you, or it shouldn't anyway, because it's one solid piece of metal, not two pieces of metal, where it could become a weak point over time. It's just one piece of metal. These all have a half stop right here. So if you look closely in the tang of the blade, you can see a slight notch cut out. And then the notch, in the, or sorry, a dimple, and then the notch in the lock bar right here of the lock back sort of rests in there just a little bit. So as you're opening up, it kind of locks in place. It gives you some time to adjust your hand to clear the opening so you can lock it in place safely. And I love hearing that double click when I flick it open. Oh, just music to my ears every time. XL. Large. And finally, the highest pitched one. The medium. Such cool knives. I love the old style Voyagers. They're getting harder and harder to find. They're getting more expensive. Um, back in the day, you can buy. If this is this is a really good condition. There's no scratches. There's no obvious signs of wear anywhere. Like this pod clip, by the way. These are all pretty much the same. Except the large one. This has a. Huh. I never noticed the pod clip on this large Voyager is longer than the one on the XL. I don't know if that's because it's the Vaquero or what, but. Regardless, I like the pocket clip right here. It works well. I carry this occasionally. Despite being such a huge, long blade, it's not very heavy. I forget it's on me. Honestly, it's an enormous, freaking huge knife, and yet it is strong enough. It's very light and balanced. It's very maneuverable. You can choke up on it right here. It's almost comically huge. It's just a giant fold knife, but I think it's absolutely beautiful, and it's so simple. Uh, but again, if you find these, people are asking for over 300 bucks on eBay and used anyway. That's what people are asking. I don't know if they're selling for that right now. Uh, but three, four, five hundred bucks in some cases, some people are asking that. Um, they're only going to go up in price, I believe, because as time goes on, more will get damaged, more will get destroyed, more will rust away, more will get lost. And when a company stops making a knife or stops making anything, in general, its price can most likely only go anywhere up. So that's the X2. Again, just one of my favorites. Just thought I'd do a look up at it. Now, not talking collectability, what's this knife good for? Um, defense. You know, you got it's very grippy, you got a lot to hold on to. Uh, it flicks out very e Again, despite being so huge, it flicks out easily. You barely need, I mean, you need some wrist movement because it is a lockback, but because the blade is just so huge, it kind of swings itself open. If you just give it just a little wrist flick right there, just give it a little nudge of momentum and it opens every single time. It's not gonna get knocked out over here and too easily. Again, not as grippy, not as secure as the newer style Voyagers, but they're more simple, more rounded. Anyway, that is it, that is the Voyager X2. I was surprised I never did a video on it. I was looking through my videos when I last did my Here's Every Knife in My Knife Collection video, and I was linking up all the reviews I did of my knives, and I did not find any one of the X2. I did reviews on the XL and the large size, but not this one, or not the medium, so, there you have it. That is the review of the Cold Steel Voyager X2. Beautiful knife.